I'm actually also going to bring in this arm type value as a variable as well. Um, it just, it'll help it go along because I realized that I actually do use this variable inside the IK and FK setups as well. So I'm just going to bring that in on the front end and you can pass as many arguments as you need to. So now that I've got that in there, then we'll start to populate the IK and FK functions with what we need here. So the only variable that's unique that I need to stop it, Siri. Um, the only variable I'm going to need in here is the one for the pull vector. So I'm just going to bring in, I'm just going to bring in the pull vector radio button that should be right down here. So let's bring that into the IK setup. So PV type. Um, true SL equals true. And I'm also going to call this PV type. Okay. And so the first thing I want to do is when I'm building this setup here is I need to determine whether I am inside the IK button here or if I'm using the IK FK button. And the reason why that matters is if I'm just putting a simple IK setup on the arms, I don't need to duplicate the arms to make any sort of switch. I can just build the IK system right on the bind joints. But if I am in the IK FK system, I need to duplicate the joints and then create, um, uh, and then make that duplicate the set of IK joints that I'm going to need. So I'm going to run as is typical with radio buttons, a, an if statement here. So if arm type equals to three. Now, I just realized that we do need to include these variables inside the IK setup because we've passed them as arguments, but the function that we're passing it to needs to accept those arguments. So what I'm going to do is literally just copy these variables inside the IK setup function here. So now these are recognized as arguments to be run inside of here. So now these two functions are connected. So now we can keep going on here. So we've got the if on type equals three. And the first thing I'm going to do is create a, a empty list here because I'm going to use this variable to label the joint system, whether I'm duplicating it or just using that as the IK joint. So I'm, whether the arm type is in three or one, I'm still going to use this variable. But since I'm duplicating it, I need to identify an empty list first so I can add that duplicate, those duplicate joints to this list. So I'm going to duplicate selected and again since we're passing selected as an argument I don't need to define it up here um, and I'm going to call this let's just say new dupe or duplicate and I'm going to create a list for that duplicate so dot ls and on new dupe and dag equals true type equals joint and now we're going to go through the process of renaming these joints because they didn't rename them when I duplicated them so we're going to go through a very similar process that we did initially for these joints 
So I'm just going to copy and paste that material over. And that's it. So again, counter equals one because we're incrementing numbers when we're naming. So, and we rename it, you know, orientation name, label name. And in this difference, I'm including IK. And we convert the counter to a string and call it waste since the IK joints are typically waste joints. And then I append these new joints into this IK joints list that I created up here. So this IK joints list now refers to the list of the duplicate joints as opposed to the original bind joints. Now I've set that up for the if the button is set to IKFK, but if it's set to if it's just set to IK, all I'm going to do is take this same IK joints variable and I'm just going to say it equals selected. So this joint list, this IK joints list will now refer to the selected joints list. So now whether the if the arm type is IKFK or just IK, this IK joints variable ref will refer to the joints I'm going to be working on. So now that I've got that all set up, now we can move on to um, setting up the controls based off the preset ones that I have in the scene. So um, we're going to set up new IK control. So the first thing I'm going to do is, and then there's no real order to how I'm doing this um, as far as how I set it up. So the first thing I do is I just color the control as the, that's the first thing I'll be doing. So I'm just going to run a set adder and uh, I'm going to use the name for the IK arm control, which should be right there under the preset. So I'm just going to use the string for that. And I'm going to use dot override enabled and set that to one. And the second line of code, I'm just going to add the color to it. And instead of normally, um, the way this works in um, for the index slider is let's see if I can find that. Let's see if I can find it. So you see here I use the numbers 7, 14, and 18. But when it actually comes to applying these, the colors to the controls, um, in Maya, it, it's actually the number, it's one number down on the slider. Um, it's These numbers apply to how it looks in the GUI, but in Maya's actual scene, these numbers are less, one less. So, under the IK setup here, I'm going to take this icon color variable that I passed from the previous, from the previous function and in parentheses I'm going to put this and I'm just going to subtract one so now it'll apply the actual color to it and hit an end parenthesis there. Alrighty now I'm also going to if you notice here um, for example For some of these controls, you'll see that I've locked and hid some of the attributes. I didn't do it for this one, but some of my other scripts, I do have these the attributes locked. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Now on this one, again, they aren't locked, but I'm just going to uh, use it anyway, just to show you how I do it, because I'm probably just going to copy and paste it in 
for the pull vector control later. So um, normally because the locking and hiding or showing attributes um, both require a line of code for every single attribute. So if I wanted to lock and hide all these attributes here, um, or at least in this case, translates and rotates, I'd have six lines of code for that. And I don't want to have to do that every single time. So what I use is a simple for loop um, to um, go run through all the attributes that I'm specifically looking for and unlock those. So in this case, I'm just going to look at, um, we'll go translate X, translate Y, translate Z, uh, rotate X, rotate Y, rotate Z. And that's really all I'm going to need for right now. Um, so say for each of those attributes, and I'm just going to paste the code in here. So for each of these attributes, um, set adder um, icon name plus each, uh, which is the variable for the for loop. You know, lock is false, channel box true, keyable equals false, uh, keyable equals true. So this just shows the attributes. And this way, I'm shortening the code that I want to use. If you're running a large code and or you're doing auto rigging for an entire rig um, it would be helpful if you could actually just turn this loop essentially into its own function and instead of having to paste this every time you want to lock and hide or show attributes you could just reference the function and what attributes you want to access there so just a helpful tip there um, And so what we're going to do here, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that constraint here because I obviously don't want that there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this control um, uh, just as it is since I don't, I don't want to have to go through the hassle of recreating the icon. And since the icon's already in the right position that I'm looking for, I'm just going to, uh, you can either duplicate the control and work with that duplicate, or you could just take this existing control and work from there. So first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the constraint. So I just use a find constraint variable and I'm just going to use the list connections command um, and I'm going to use this icon and I'm just going to use some uh, attribute here just to say it doesn't really matter just as long as it's one of the ones the constraint is connected to so it'll know to look for that specific constraint so look for the Translate X, it'll look for the icon. <coughs> Excuse me. And now that I've found the constraint, um, that should be the only thing that's connected to that attribute. So all I, all I can do, have to do now is just delete that constraint. And that constraint is now gone. So what I can do now is freeze transforms on the control. Just copy and paste that in here. This is just freezing transforms on the icon. And the last one is renaming the control. And so I just give it a, a new variable and rename the control based on the orientation, the label, and just give it a, a new name. So now I have the IK control ready to go. Um, and so now we're going to start looking at creating the IK handle. So now that we have the control in place, let's start creating the IK handle. IK 
Okay, handle setup. 